This is BBC News and these are the top stories developing at a... Hello, a very good morning to you. It's Friday the 9th of March. I'm Anita McVeigh and welcome to BBC Newsroom Live. In breaking news, in the last few minutes, we've heard that 100 military personnel are being deployed to Salisbury in the wake of Sunday's attack on former Russian spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia. Our home uh, Leila Nathu in Salisbury. Now, President Trump has accepted an unprecedented offer from North Korea to meet Kim Jong-un for talks. The meeting will happen by May. No serving U.S. president has ever met a North Korean leader. The surprise announcement was made by senior South Korean officials in Washington who passed on a letter from the North Korean leader. In it, he pledged to commit to denuclearization. He also ruled out any more nuclear and missile tests. The United States welcomed the move but said sanctions would stay in place until a deal is reached. Our Washington correspondent Chris Buckler has this report. Well, the U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson has been giving his reaction to the news and explained how involved President Trump was in making this happen. Now, NHS employers and health unions, as we mentioned in the headlines, are understood to be close to agreeing a three-year pay deal for hundreds of thousands of staff in England. Here, a proposal to impose a so-called latte levy on throwaway coffee cups has been rejected by the government. MPs on the Environmental Audit Committee had suggested a charge of 25 pence for disposable coffee cups to reduce their use. But ministers say it's better for shops to offer voluntary discounts to customers bringing their own cups. Roger Harabin reports. Back now to one of our top stories today and the news that 180 military personnel are being deployed to help with the investigation into the nerve agent attack on a former Russian spy and his daughter. Uh, we've had a statement from the Defence Secretary Gavin Williamson who's saying our armed forces have stepped up to support the police in their investigation. We have the right people with the right skills to assist with this crucial inquiry. Well, let's talk now to the former First Sea Lord and Chief of the Naval Staff, Lord West, who was also Security Minister between 2007 and 2010. Uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, today. Uh, tell us about what those skills are that are going to be deployed in this case. Time to take a look now at some of today's other developing stories. And BBC News has uncovered allegations of bullying and harassment in the House of Commons, affecting dozens of females. Alice, thank you very much. The European Union's senior trade official says dialogue with the U.S. is her preferred option after President Trump announced that tariffs on steel and aluminium imports will be imposed in two weeks. Cecilia Melstrom wants an, exem an exemption for the EU from the charges. Mr. Trump says Canada and Mexico will be excluded from the measures but singled out Germany for criticism. Libo de Secco reports. This is BBC News and these are the top stories developing at midday. Hello, good afternoon. It's Friday the 9th of March. I'm Anita McVeigh and welcome to BBC Newsroom Live. In the last hour, it's been confirmed that military teams specially trained in chemical warfare are being deployed in Salisbury to help the police with their investigation into the poisoning of a former Russian spy. 180 Royal Marines and RAF personnel are being sent to the city to help with the investigation on the ground. They'll help secure contaminated sites, as well as assisting in the recovery of evidence. Home Secretary Amber Rudd visited Salisbury earlier today and spoke to investigators before heading to the hospital where she met the injured police officer, Detective Sergeant Nick Bailey. Well, let's talk now to our correspondent, uh, Leila Nathu, who is in Salisbury for us. Leila, first of all, the latest developments, the deployment of uh, 180 military personnel. When are they expected to arrive? Well, questions are still being asked as to why Sergei Skripal was targeted. One man who met him recently in London revealed he'd been working in cybersecurity. He also said he'd been visiting the capital once a month to meet friends in the Russian embassy. Speaking to our correspondent Richard Galpin, he said he believed he may have been a target of Russian criminal gangs in an attempt to internationally discredit President Putin ahead of Russia's election. Valery uh, Morozov, uh, an acquaintance of Sergei Skripal. 
Now, our other main story of the day, President Trump has accepted an unprecedented offer from North Korea to meet Kim Jong-un for talks. The meeting will happen in May. No serving U.S. president has ever met a North Korean leader. The surprise announcement was made by senior South Korean officials in Washington who'd passed on a letter from the North Korean leader. Well, in it, he pledged to commit to denuclearization. He also ruled out any more nuclear and missile tests. The United States welcomed the move, but said sanctions would stay in place until a deal is reached. Our Washington correspondent, Chris Buckler, has this report. And uh, you can see uh, more on all of those stories, of course, on the website, bbc.co.uk forward slash news. Now, a proposal to impose a so-called latte levy on throwaway coffee cups has been rejected by the government. MPs on the Environmental Audit Committee had suggested a charge of 25 pence for disposable coffee cups to reduce their use. But ministers say it's better for shops to offer voluntary discounts to customers bringing their own cups. Roger Harabin reports. Now, when Henry VIII's doomed warship, the Mary Rose, was successfully lifted from the seabed in the 1980s, it was seen as a major archaeological achievement. More than 1,000 cannonballs were found on board, but now they need urgent attention as they're rotting away. Tim Muffet reports. In a moment, it's the News at One with Ben Brown. First, let's take a look at the weather forecast with Chris Fawkes.